way we have two sources. Yeah, do you need it done by Monday? I mean, I could certainly do a rush on it and to have something ready for you to I, um, I like to run it. morning. We will open the ceremony with a posting of the colors and the Pledge of Allegiance. Cadets, please post the colors. If you would like to do so, please put your hand over your heart and look at the flag while you are reciting the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning and welcome to the Sunderland Veterans Memorial and the Veterans Day Observance Ceremony. I would like to welcome everyone to this very special event. Sunderland Elementary School students and staff, community members, our special guests from Westover Air Reserve Base and the University of Massachusetts, the officers of VFW Post 3295, and of course, all the military veterans in attendance. At this time, I would like to invite Charlotte Vickery, Diego Frazier, and Ben Ayotte to the podium to read Governor Baker's Veterans Day Proclamation. Following the reading of the proclamation, retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Dan Van Dalsen, Sunderland's veteran representative, will introduce our military guests who are volunteering their time for this very special event. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a proclamation. Whereas, since the Commonwealth's days, colonial days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. Whereas, on November 11, 1918, the armistice was signed in the Forest of Compaign. By the Allied Nations, That day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans. And whereas there are approximately 388,000 veterans living in Massachusetts, and whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions of our veterans that they have made to our country, and whereas we honor and salute those who have served our country throughout the generations with honor, 
patriotism, and courage. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts city and citizens remember the bravery of those who have served their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11, 2019 to be Veterans Day and, and urge all citizens of the Commonwealth take cognizance of this event and participate in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston this first day of November in the year 2019 and of the independence of the United States of America, 243rd. By His Excellency Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth, Karen E. Polito, Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth, William Francis Galvin, Secretary of the Commonwealth. Well, this is uh, obviously too cold. I'll try and do this. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. These are the people who are, are uh, volunteering their time today. The U.S. Marine Corps uh, Major have a backup so we are we are live right now it's now time to introduce our guest speaker retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Dan Van Dalsen is actually a native to California he joined the United States Air Force in 1963 when he was just 17 years old and served as an enlisted man for the next 16 years during that time while working as an air traffic controller, Dan attained the enlisted rank of Master Sergeant. From 1977 to 1980, 
Under Air Force sponsorship, Dan attended California Polytechnic University in Panoma, California, and in June of 1980 was awarded a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering. Immediately following his graduation, he was commissioned as a second lieutenant and served another 22 years in the Air Force. Dan's last Air Force assignment was as the commander of the Air Force ROTC detachment at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst, where he worked from 1998 until 2001. On September 1, 2001, Dan retired as a lieutenant colonel with a combined total of more than 38 years of service in the United States Air Force. Dan and his wife, Monica, have resided in Sunderland since July of 1998. They have two adult children and four grandchildren. You may already know that since his Air Force retirement, Dan has been active serving our Sunderland community in various capacities. In fact, Dan helped organize today's ceremony, as well as all previous ceremonies, beginning with the very first one in November 2009. Please join me in welcoming Dan to the podium as this year's guest speaker. I'm glad we have a backup. This would make me hoarse trying to trying to uh, shout out to you. So can everybody hear me? Yes. All right. Some of you may remember me from last year or the year before ceremony, but as you heard, my name's Dan. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this ceremony today. Do you know this is the 11th year, the 11th time your, princ your principal and your teachers have done this for you? That's right, this program started 11 years ago with the goal of helping you understand the reason the United States has a Veterans Day. Although I know it can be fun to be out of class, this ceremony is about more than just getting some free time outside of your classroom. 11 years, that means some of your classmates, and maybe even you yourself, were not even born when this ceremony started. So let me talk a little bit about Veterans Day and what it's all about. For example, when did this holiday start? And why do we even have a Veterans Day anyway? Well, I'm gonna to try to answer those questions for you today. You know, Veterans Day didn't start off being called Veterans Day at all. It was called Armistice Day. Any of you kids know what the word armistice means? If you do, raise your hand. Okay, well, let me tell you. The word armistice means to stop fighting. So Armistice Day must have been a day that was set aside to recognize that the fighting had stopped. In fact, that's true. Armistice Day was set aside as a holiday to honor the end of World War I. Back then, World War I was called the Great War. It was a terrible war that was so damaging to the people and economies across the world that it was referred to as the war to end all wars. And that was because people wanted to believe that there would never be another one. World War I officially ended when the Treaty of Versailles was signed on June 28, 1919. But because the soldiers on both sides had stopped fighting seven months earlier, when an armistice went into effect at 11 a.m. on November 11th, or on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918, for that reason, November 11, 1918 is regarded as the end of World War I. 100 years ago today, in November 1919, President Wilson proclaimed November 11th as the first Armistice Day. He said, to us in America, the reflections of Armistice Day will be filled with solemn pride in the heroism of those who died in our country's service and with gratitude for the victory both because of the thing for which it has freed us and because of the opportunity it has given America to show her sympathy with peace and justice in the councils of the nations. In 1954, after our country had been through two more wars, World War II and Korea, Congress amended the Act of 1938 by striking out the word armistice and inserting the word veterans. 
So beginning in 1954, November 11th became the day we used to honor everyone who has ever worn the uniform of the United States. Thomas Paine, who was one of our early politicians, said those who expect to reap the blessings of freedom must, like men, undergo the fatigue of supporting it. Some of the military people you see here today have experienced what it means to wage war in order to bring peace. To these men and women, I say thank you. Thank you for your willingness to continue to stand the watch. Thank you for setting the example of selfless service and thank you for protecting us in our way of life. So you've heard a little bit about how Veterans Day came to be. There's another American holiday called Memorial Day. A memorial, the word memorial means something that was made to remind people of a person or event. In the case of Memorial Day, it was specifically established so we could remember all the American men and women who gave their lives in the service of our country. So the difference is Memorial Day is a day to honor all those who died for our country, while Veterans Day recognizes everyone who has ever worn the uniform of the United States, both living and dead. Veterans Day, above all, is an opportunity to celebrate the choice a person makes to serve our country. For some people, this meant worldwide conflict of World War II, or a lifetime of peacekeeping missions, or the tenth standoff of the Cold War. Still others served in the jungles of Vietnam, or in Korea, or Panama, or the many other conflicts we've asked our men and women to serve in over the years. And of course, we can't forget that today, for many of our men and women in uniform, service means multiple tours to Iraq or Afghanistan on active duty, or as reservists and guard members who sacrifice twice because they have to give up their civilian jobs to serve our country. Only about 1% of our population serves in the military. 1%. That's kind of like scoring one point on a test that you could have scored 100 points on. It's not very much. But consider the impact that 1% has had on our world in defending our freedoms and protecting our way of life. There was an Englishman called Sir Winston Churchill who was the Prime Minister of England during World War II. He, talking about the soldiers, sailors, uh, airmen, and Marines who served in World War II, said, never in the field of human endeavor was so much owed by so many to, by so many to so few. So today I ask you to take a little bit of time out of your day to honor all the military service members past and present. If you know a veteran, you should ask them about their service. In fact, you can do that today when the men and women you see in front of you visit you in your classrooms. Ask them about their lives, the uniforms they wear, or the places they've served. You'll learn a lot. Or you can simply say, thank you for your service. I guarantee that comment will be very much appreciated. So let's use today and the veterans days of the years to come to celebrate service to our nation and to demonstrate the appreciation we have for all of our military men and women. To all the uniformed members and veterans here today, I thank you for your service and your sacrifice. I share the pride you feel in being able to count yourselves among that 1%. And for all those here today who are not in the military, I thank you for choosing to share this special day with us and for showing your support for all of our mil military heroes, past and present. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Please direct your attention to the flag, where the Westover Honor Guard will be raising the flag to half staff. While Veterans Day is a tribute to America's living veterans and is more a celebration than a solemn remembrance, it is always appropriate to include a moment of respect for those who gave their lives for our country. One way that we show respect is to fly our flag at half staff in memory of an important person who has died. When a person in the armed forces has died while serving our country, the song Taps is also played in their memory. 
The Westover Honor Guard will now lower the flag to half staff, while TAPS is played by Frontier Regional High School band students, Aiden Gray, who is in 11th grade, and Leo Francesca, who is in 10th grade. Please feel free to place your hand over your heart during the flag lowering to half staff. It is also appropriate to remain silent and quiet during this portion of the ceremony. Group attention! Present arms! <laughs> We will now observe one minute of silence. Thank you. Under the direction of second grade teacher Lee Worthley, students will now sing My Country Tis of Thee. Students in grades one through four will sing the first verse. And then grades five and six will join in as we all sing the first verse again.
Okay, the Westover Honor Guard is going to do a flag folding demonstration for you now. I introduced uh, them before, but this is Senior Airman Tyler Corliss and Senior Airman Jan Soto. They'll be coming out to the center of the circle and uh, do the demonstration for you. The primary mission of the Westover Honor Guard is military burials. Unfortunately, a lot of our World War II heroes are leaving us. This flag folding is what they do at a military funeral and the flag is then presented to the family.
Sixth grade students Jacob Sahone and McClellan Hill will now read a Veterans Day poem. Take a moment to thank a veteran when you see someone in a uniform, someone who serves us all, doing military duty, answering their country's call. Take a moment to thank them for protecting what you hold dear. Tell them you are proud of them, make it very clear. Just tap them on the shoulder, give a smile and say, thanks for what you're doing to keep us safe in the USA. Thank you. We will now conclude our ceremony with the song, This Land is Your Land. Thank you, Mrs. Worley. Color guard, please retire the colors. Group, attention! Present arms! Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our formal ceremony. Before we begin our walk back to Sunderland Elementary School, I'd like to take a moment to formally thank Mr. Van Dalsen for all that he has done for our country and the community of Sunderland. His 38 years of service in the Air Force is nothing short of remarkable. Although there is no single act of kindness that could completely capture and honor all that you have done, we do have a gift for you. This small gesture is our way of saying thanks for serving. Mr. Van Dalsen, you are an educator, a dedicated husband, parent, and grandparent, a veteran, and now also a Sunderland Elementary School Eagle. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you to our special guests, 
the service women and men who helped to make this recognition ceremony so special. We appreciate all that you do for your communities and for your country. As always, you are cordially invited to the Sunderland Elementary School to visit our classrooms, attend recess, help out during writing block, and eat lunch with our students. Boys and girls, please listen to your homeroom teacher as we get ready to head back to the school. Thank you.